Thank you. Thank you. It's our last day, so we'll try and keep this short and sweet. What I've got here is a three meter chrome tipped barrel by look of it. Okay. What are the few things that we look for in a barrel before we start drilling? You must use tape. Yep. What else? Demotion. Red condition. Red condition. Yes. Okay. Well, thickness. There was another barrel here that did have a bit of worn. Right behind you. Yeah, check, check the wear marks in the barrel. Yeah, that's one. So those, those things are important when you uh, check your barrel before you start drilling because what you don't want to ha have happen is when you start drilling, when you're like two, three hundred metres, you can get problems, you know. If they're worn like that, you might get slipped <coughs> in the core, bar uh, core barrel and you lose water. And what will happen, you end up burning your bit. Okay. On this core barrel, we've got a bit. Stabiliser by look at it. Oh no, Rima, Rima. And... What do we have on the end here normally? Blank. No. Back remote or remote? Blank. Adapter. Adapter coupling? Adapter. Adapter coupling. And what's the last thing we have on the barrel? Locking. Locking. Locking coupling. All right. So inside the barrel we have what's normally is a stabilizer. Landing ring. And a landing ring. Okay. And it's always good to just check your both the stabilizer and your landing ring. Okay. And with, just remember with PQ, the stabiliser goes inside the bit, alright? Okay. So all those things that we mentioned, make sure it's straight, make sure it's not worn, uh, make sure that your reamer is, is correct. If your reamer is worn, best to change it, alright? If you're drilling a deep hole, for example, it's best to use two or three reamers, okay? Because as you drill, you don't want to, if you go deep to about five, six, seven hundred meters and you need to do a rod pull and change the remit, you, uh, you don't want to use a new one sometimes because as we know the hole gets smaller and smaller, okay? So it's always good when you do a rod pull, change the remit out. So you swap them over and keep, I normally keep like two on a rig when I'm doing a deep hole. Okay? Any questions? Yep. What is the using of this chrome is at the end of the barrel? <coughs> the function of the chrome? Can anyone say? What do we use chrome on the barrel? Reduce the image. Give it extra strength. That is actually while, uh, while holding with the permanently wrench or something, then no damage should happen to the barrel. Yeah, yeah that is the reason. We do have other kinds of barrels. We have like a chrome barrel. Those are designed to try and keep the hole nice and straight. Uh, you have other barrels which are called flexi barrels, which they, uh, I think normally they have chrome on the, the ends and they taper off and they're thin in the middle so you can get a bit of flex when you're drilling. So if you want to go deviate the hole, you can do it that way, all right? But normally you find on rigs, just your standard barrel. Okay, all right. Any more questions about the core barrel? We're good? Okay. What's this one? Okay. What's this? This one here. And this one up here. What's down here? Door case and inside it? Door lift. And something. Alright. What are the, some of the things that we check on the inner tube? Straightness. Straightness, yes. Shut on. Just with the inner tube first, we check for straightness. We check for wear marks. Uh, you check if there's no bulges or squashed. Because sometimes people may use Stilson's on them and you can squash it. So as you're drilling, it'll, blo it'll block off. Or well, sometimes there, there might be a pinch point there. So always check that. Just run, run your hand along it, along it. And make sure there's no bulge, bulges. Normally, to check it when it's straight, roll it on the racks and just check. Okay. It's easy for doing it. Door lifter properly. Locking, rotating, bridging, filling. So you check your lifter case. Make sure that you oil it. Make sure that it's uh, not worn. Normally, you find 
Everybody put one of your hand on it. It feels thin. Change it. Okay. Same with the core lifter. Just check inside the core lifter. Make sure the teeth are still there. Make sure it's still um, working properly. And if you're using triple tube, make sure that the the ring inside there is the correct way, okay? Especially when you use, who uses triple tube here? Yeah. Just make sure that's the, the correct way. Okay. You can get different types of core lifters depending on what ground you're drilling. Um, you can get ones with basket catches. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And ones with the basket catcher, they're designed to stop the broken core from dropping back down. Okay? And blocking off your inner tube. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Okay. Alright. Any questions so far? Alright. This is your normal head assembly. You got two rubbers there. What's the function of those? And how do they work? Return valve. Once the barrel is completely filled, it will push it and that will get inflated and that will block the passage of water. Yep. Exactly right. So even when you're drilling and the core moves and it blocks off, yeah, exactly. the idea is these swell. That swells, stops the water going through, and on your gauge, it blows off. All right. You can get different types of uh, rubbers, soft and hard. Normally, guys just have hard, hard rubbers on there. Yeah. Okay. As you drill deeper, you can sometimes change these rubbers to just washers. Okay. Because when you go past a thousand or twelve hundred meters, these swell out anyway. So you find a lot of drillers; they start to cut it. This one doesn't have it, but you should always grease the cap assembly because inside here you got your spring and your hex nut. And this this spring is important. It's inside here. Okay. Because this spring here helps you break the core off bottom. Okay. So you always need to check that. And how you check that? You just check the tension. Check your back end. If it's loose, it needs to be tightened in there. Okay. What's this? Landing shoulder. Landing shoulder. Landing shoulder. What does that do? Landing ring. Yes, that's right. Okay. So you just need to check this as well. If it's worn, what you can do is turn it, take this off, turn it around, and use the other side. Okay. Because sometimes, if you don't check this, sometimes it can get jammed into the barrel, and then you got a rod pull, and that's a real time-consuming process. Okay. What are these? Latches. Latches. Latches, yes, latches. This one is actually. Cam latch. Cam latch, okay. So you get a couple of, you get a few designs of latches. This one is a sandbag design, it's a cam latch. Long year has a, you know the name? Spring. Uh, spring, latch, spring, latch. spring latch. Link latch, yeah. Latch. Port Long year has a link latch, and the old style was a spring latch. Okay. On your sites, what do you, what kind of latches do you use? Cam latch. Anything else? Spring latch. Link latch. Okay. So what are the, what are these designed to do? Okay. So with these, we seat the tube. And it stops the inner tube from spinning with the core barrel. Okay? So, what you need to do when you're on site, you're going to teach your offsiders or whoever you're drilling with just to check the latches, check that they're not worn on the sides there, check that it works, make sure everything operates. And a good idea is to always grease that. And if you had a grease nipple on here, swap some grease in there as well. Check your rubbers. And your bearings as well. Okay. So, does anyone know how to set the gap on the core barrel? Yes. Yeah. Adjusting. Right. How would you adjust it? According to barrel. So, who knows the bit gap from the lift core lifter to the bit? What is the standard? One centimeter. One centimeter. Five mil. Okay. Why is that important? 
Like you said, it's very important to make sure that your bit gap is the right gap. I, I tend to play with my inner tube, for example, if I'm drilling through really good ground, I'll make the gap slightly bigger. And then I'll increase my water flow, because I want to drive it, I want to penetrate. I want to beat my cross shift, and so I want an extra meter, so I need more water at the bit to pull it down. If I'm going through broken ground, then I'll make the gap shorter. So it gives the core less chance of moving as I'm drilling. Okay? So it's a very good way of... Uh, yes. Also, Even in soft clay, you have to keep the as much closer because the clay will wash down. Yes, right. Yeah, well, water washing. Yeah. Also, if I was drilling through clay, I'd change my bit as well for high flow. Okay? So with this one, you got the overshot on it, this is the old style with the pin, so what you need to do is always just check these, which are called your lifting dogs, make sure that they're in good condition, because they can wear, they normally last about 10,000 metres on average, on average, okay, with your spare point also just check where it grabs onto, make sure that's okay, some guys I know, they put like a uh, steel wire through here because sometimes your spear point comes undone. Okay, that's just an extra precaution. It's up to the driller himself what he wants to do. All right? In here, have you heard the term popping the ball? Yes. Okay, good. So just make sure that ball's okay. Before you set your tube, pop it. And as you know, as you, as you send it down, once, once it hit, it, yeah. That ball goes from there to there the pressure should come up as well, okay? That's one of the best ways to know that you've seated your tube. All right. I think that's it for me. All right. So we've spoken about the core barrel, spoken about the inner tube. Just quickly, just with, these, with the drill rods, also, you've got to make sure that these are clean as well. The way that this is set up off the ground, this is good. Okay? So, as you check the core barrel, just make sure that your rods are straight, okay? And you normally check them by just rolling them on the rack. If you've got a bent one, then you, you have rod vibration, then you have problems down the hole. <coughs> also, these wear, so just check for wear marks. Check the threads. If the threads are damaged, I wouldn't use it, okay? And how you check the threads, you normally run your finger on the edge of it, and you can feel if it's sharp or thin. And then you know it's, it's starting to wear out, it's starting, you need to replace it, okay? So always put grease on your rod. When you add a rod to the, to the rig, give it a bit of grease, okay? Look after your rods. So the type of rods here, I think these are Q-series rods, you can tell that by the thread. You check the thread. Yeah. They're slightly thicker, so that's a Q. The thread over there, we call that a W. w. It's thinner, all right? So a lot of your casings got W3. Any questions so far? Just a reminder, never use filters with the inner tube. You end up squashing it. Inner tube ke saath pipe wrench use much karna. Inner tube wrench. And when you use uh, inner tube wrenches, nice and tight. I've seen some guys just don't need that, just nice and tight, okay? That's all you need. So Tony, uh, can you show them how to uh, put the wrench, you know, pull the wrench? Uh, Gupta ji? Sir. Sir, inner tube wrench. Inner tube wrench. Okay. One hand which goes there, the other one goes there, okay? Should be like that. Okay. When you tighten it up, 
Questions? No. No questions, I'm breaking. Okay. <laughs> I've got a question. Um, when you empty the inner tube, how do you guys do it? I've seen some different styles lately, so I just want to see how you guys do it. How do you empty the core? How do you empty the core? How do you empty the Okay, uh, just I make the question simple. Uh, you know, what do you do here? The core lifter case. Uh, say, all of them are going to empty the core. कोई दूसरा टाइप से खुलते हैं क्या? हेड से भी है। तो सम पीपल दे डू थ्रू हेड, सम पीपल तो यो यू नो कोर लेवर के। कोई दोनों ही खोल देते हैं। कोई दोनों का भी। तो नहीं निकलेगा तो कितना बढ़ेगा? And if you had some uh, inner tube racks, it's good to use those as well, okay? They're very useful. So just want to make sure, but always make sure that you're safe when you enter the core. Don't put your hands over the front, keep your hands to the side, especially if you got it up on an angle and you've got a sharp piece of core, it can cut. All right? So make sure you're always safe. And Tony, how to tie the overshot with the wire rope, wire line rope? Who knows how to splice here? You know how to splice? Yep. You might have to cut that. Does everyone understand what I mean by splicing? No. Nope. Alright. Okay. What you can do with your wire line rope is splice it. So what you do, you, do we want to actually go through it? I need something to cut the wire line with. Okay, Gupta sir. Where are you? 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 Where